Hello and a very warm welcome to today's session brought to you by Team Biotools Exam Prep. I hope all of you are doing really well this Tuesday evening. Without further ado, let's just very, very quickly get started with today's brief, crisp introduction to 19th century literature major pointers. Today's session is going to be a sort of a revision for some of the important pointers and just wants to orient you towards reading 19th century literature. Um, so a quick, quick re uh, revision. Let's just very quickly get started with some of the important pointers that you have to remember when we are looking at Victorian age which is also called as the age of reform this is also famously called as the age where we are able to see that there is a lot of social change that is taking place right um, there is a beautiful way to look at Victorian age and that way to look at Victorian age is to understanding that the initial part is a period of turbulence turbulence where movements like chartism are coming in good evening everybody good evening good evening i see a lot of uh, people who've joined in already there's madhusmita uh, rupesh madhusmita chitiga uh, the shilpa uh, there is neha jain neha jain nice great uh, tulika devi uh, there is also prashant uh, geetu shilpa nikomoni damar vivas prashant zahida gaurav Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Without further ado, I think let's just quickly do he, Satyajit, Zahida. All right. Good evening, everyone. So <clears throat> basically, this 19th century that we are talking about, let's just orient ourselves into reading it. Uh, this is the, the age of the 19th century novel. We are able to see that realism is coming about. Analytical skills are there. Realism is developing itself as a major genre altogether. This is the age where we are able to see that, you know, your realistic writings are actually uh, getting a strong foothold altogether as we are able to see. So uh, your realistic writings are becoming very, very popular. The 19th century realistic writings are becoming absolutely popular. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening. So uh, the early part actually starts with the Chartist movement, Chartism, which is a working class movement altogether. Uh, from this Chartist movement comes the uh, the term that is being used, that is condition of England novels. Condition of England novels are basically novels that are telling you about the plight of the working classes. There are reforms that are taking place, the th three major reforms of the Victorian age, which are enabling male and enfranchisement that means by the end of the 19th century all the male are male population members are allowed to vote and um, make sure that you know the electorate is something which is being defined altogether so that is another pointer that you're able to largely see over here um, that you should ideally be uh, you know well aware about good evening everybody good evening so please remember all these pointers do keep in mind all these pointers over here whenever we are looking at Victorian period. Then comes a period of economic stability. It is also the period where the great exhibition is taking place. The great legal, the uh, the great exhibition that is taking place. Prince Ed, uh, Albert is playing a very critical role here. Uh, all the so-called marvels of the world are being displayed on uh, on proper site. So clear uh, show of your uh, mercantilism, materialism. That is something that is becoming very very prominent over here that you're able to see uh, but finally the last period is the period of skepticism we are able to look at how people are questioning the umpire they're questioning where the money is coming from so that is how you can actually define your turbulence your economic prosperity skepticism as winds of change during the 19th century 19th century Victorian literature is also famously termed as the age of reform. It is also famously called as the age of 19th century novels. Novels are becoming loose, baggy monsters because we are able to see that they are accounts of realism, right? They're accounts of realism. So 19th century, you don't just get questions that are coming on Victorian British literature. You also get questions on 19th century Russian writing. Things. You're getting a lot of questions coming from 19th century American literature, a lot of questions from other European writers who are writing during the 19th century, Indian writings also. So 19th century, the literature is a huge, vast body of literature, roughly from 1832 all the way till the death of Queen Victoria, 1901. 
right so today through the course of this brief lecture we will look at certain pointers what is the agenda of today's lecture the agenda of today's lecture is to orient ourselves into reading victorian literature particularly reading it from the rotledge right particularly at least having a birds eye view from the rotledge it's, uh, itself right yes 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 rupesh uh, rupesh absolutely right like uh, you know uh, you all should apply my my uh, my humble recommendation to everybody is going to be do apply for all these exams because you know the more practice you actually give the better it becomes and you get a lot of confidence so i highly recommend all of you to certainly sit for your northeast set exams or any exam that is coming any assistant professor exam which is coming haryana assistant professor exam punjab assistant professor exam rajasthan's uh, uh, assistant professor exam or gse any teaching based college level teaching based exam or higher um, post graduate teaching based exams are coming in literature do not leave the opportunity at all definitely sit for those exams right it should be it should be a given you should always fill the form i remember uh, you know when when we had started taking the first batches like you know really long time back um, like uh, uh, almost seven seven and a half years ago so there was this kid of mine she used to make a joke she, she was like ma'am kuch aur ho na ho pura india to aap ghumwa hi doge because you know i used to coax them so much to write all the exams or uh, to make sure that you know any set exam which was coming any sort of phd exam was coming i would always encourage them to write them so um, that was like an internal joke so all of you should certainly write these exams for sure okay all right so let us look at today let us orient ourselves let us look at some pointers very brief le lecture it will be today let us look at some pointers and after those pointers what will we see after those pointers we will then be covering some important details all together fine all right so let's very very quickly get started i'll be sharing a, a couple of things on the telegram platform as well uh, please stay tuned about that and be very very motivated especially now you know the, the we are in the halo of your uh, net exam dates coming in okay great expectations by charles dickens is also a work which is having the same title so we are looking at what is the agenda for today's class we are looking at some important pointers either related directly to victorian age or indirectly to victorian age or victorian writers and then we will practice a quick few questions and then i have a homework for all of you to do which is a mandatory homework before our next class all right okay so uh, here we have here we are having a uh, over oh where where did the comments go one second where did i lose the comments anyway they they will they should be coming in in so a uh, great expectations is also a work which is coming from the pen of kathy acker uh, kathy acker is a person kathy acker is a person who's also writing great expectations without changing the name of great expectations right without changing the name of great expectations altogether so this question also comes in um, in your exams and you should also ideally know about it you should also have a clear cut idea about these kind of uh, things also there are of course so jack mags by uh, when we are talking about say uh, peter carey the writer was getting the booker prize twice for true uh, history uh, you know uh, for true history of kelly gang or uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, the the writings like oscar and lucinda is also writing jack mags which is a reworking of charles dickens great expectations but here great expectations is called the same great expectations as charles dickens writings and this work is a work which is coming by the american writer kathy acker kathy acker is writing it it is a post modern reworking so here you can easily revise features of 19th century novels features of post modern literature features of post modern literature 19th century literature right all these features you can actually revise what are the features of post modern writings what are the features of post modern writings roman of flu right roman of flu why roman of flu roman of flu these are novels which are actually <clears throat> having generations that are depicted then you have open uh, open ended uh, so called uh, open ended uh, novels that are emerging why are they open ended they're open ended uh, open ended because they want the readers to make meaning out of the text right they're wanting the readers to actually make meaning out of the text that they're reading so there are very open ended readings that we are all able to see all together right open ended readings are coming across 
so that also becomes uh, important for our understanding for our evaluation altogether so you should revise the features also of uh, you know postmodern writing certain examples this is how you review the topics altogether right uh, if if unless and until you wouldn't be doing that if if uh, you will perhaps not do that then things become a little more uh, troublesome problematic and then you will not be able to revise it uh, at the very last minute so certain features of postmodern writing certain features related to postmodern literature they have to be on your fingertips for sure you need to definitely uh, mull over you you need to certainly look at you know the, the english novel the english poetic tradition in the postmodern period it's a very important unit altogether so if we are reviewing if we are revising the features of postmodern writings what are some of the features can anyone put it yes playfulness pastiche very good very good absolutely right absolutely right you these are certain features that you will have to know right first of all please remember that all of these we've actually discussed this in a youtube lecture as well but the post modern novel or the post modern writings are narratives of nostalgia right they are they are trying to go back to the good old days william golding's lord of the flies the inheritors pincher martin saul bellows henderson the rain king they are all trying to tell you that you know earlier the good old days the good old days that is what they are talking about so some of the features of post modern writings post modern novel particularly are that they are narratives of nostalgia we've already done this we've already taken a look at it they are narratives of nostalgia they are trying to talk about good old days Saul Bellow talks about it. Saul Bellow talks about it. William Golding talks about it. The good old days. That is what they are trying to invoke. Their narratives of nostalgia altogether. Roman Fluff, like I was telling you, these are novels that are telling you about uh, different generations. C. P. Snow, Strangers and Brothers, very important. Social history is being captured. Henry Williamson, A Chronicle of Ancient Sunlight. a chronicle anthony powell question comes a dance to the music of time a dance to the music of time anthony powell these are all roman fluve that we are able to see right these are all examples of roman fluve that is coming across cp snow anthony powell anthony powell all of these are becoming examples of roman fluve telling you about generations a dance to the music of time 1951 to 76 right or henry williamson a chronicle of ancient sunlight a chronicle of ancient sunlight by henry williamson or strangers and brothers cp snow very very famous very popular even in your net exam charles pierce snow writing two cultures so <clears throat> all of these writings are also examples there are so many political narratives george orwell becomes an example george orwell's animals farm 1945 1984 originally published in 1949 propaganda literature propaganda literature or political narratives so your political narratives are becoming so popular during this time you are able to see that there are your political narratives that are coming in george orwell is this is also leading to the development of propaganda literature compare this with your <coughs> marxist conceptions of literature <coughs> i'm so sorry compare it with marxist ideology or marxist uh, ideas or notions of literature altogether you can actually do that right so here here <coughs> okay the joke of the day has come shalini chaudhary no idea bas chal rahi hai aur chali ja rahi hai <laughs> okay so satirizing you know those uh, those so called uh, <coughs> dictatorial uh, governments all together right uh, then you have black humor playfulness narratives of morality graham green a perfect example of narratives of morality right comic realism dark humor these are also becoming very very popular you are able to see that there is dark humor there is comic realism comic realism wants to make us laugh but it's telling us the reality altogether comic realism altogether that is what we are able to see over here women's voices are becoming so important right the voices of women doris lessing's examples the grass is singing doris lessing's first novel the question comes the grass is singing it is telling you about uh, you know it is telling you about africa in apartheid children of violence is by doris lessing beautiful work again a, a, you know a five volume series children of violence 
the golden notebook the epic 1962 golden notebook must read work all together irish murdoch's writings about alienation <clears throat> so science fiction so many types you know if you start looking at it that's what you have to do and this is one example of postmodern writings so while reviewing you have to make sure that all these aspects are also being covered so kathy ecker is writing uh, reworking charles dickens's great expectations please remember to cover charles dickens in a proper format a lot of times we see that you know students get a little overwhelmed by while looking at charles dickens why because largely whenever <coughs> i'm so sorry <coughs> largely whenever we are covering charles dickens there is that should be the last thing that you are being afraid about you should have a proper method of uh, dissecting these writings dissecting these works <coughs> i'm so sorry i'm looking for a napkin I'm just not able to get it. Sorry. So uh, there is always a proper technique, a proper method to make sure that you are looking at these writings in a, pro a proper manner altogether, right? In a proper manner altogether, you're trying to cover them. You're trying to look at them. So, so for instance, if you have to cover Dickens, if you have to cover Dickens, how can we cover Dickens? Let's just take it point by point. Okay, let's just take it point by point. Let's look at Great Expectations, for instance. sorry <clears throat> so how we are able to see it is an example of a building sruman it is telling us a story of pip right great expectations is covering the story of pip it's a novel which is telling you it's a kind of a building sruman building sruman are novels which are telling you the growth of the central protagonist right there is a clear cut growth of the central protagonist that we are able to see right he's staying with his sister he's staying with his uh, sister's husband joey very important character you know how you are able to see that his life changes altogether when he meets when he is meeting his estranged uncle so how the wealth is coming the wealth is not coming by hard work the wealth is coming by change of fortune great expectations the development then all these all these works all these works are very very great expectations is of course important uh, bleak house you get questions so you can make a table also bleak house what all questions are usually asked from bleak house at least cover them from oxford companion these writings for your exams right great expectations bleak house bleak house what are you able to see uh, it is one of the only novels which has a female narrator who's the female narrator this is the only one of the only novels in which we are able to see of dickens where there is a presence of a female narrator who's the female narrator that we are talking about yes everyone yes everyone <coughs> yes 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 what is what is who's the female narrator that we talking about remember esther summerson esther summerson by now all these things should start getting on your fingertips esther summerson right esther summerson is the female narrator that we are having and this is trying to attack the legal system it is a satire on the legal system it is a satire on the legal system the jarndyce and jarndyce case which is being held in the chancery all these questions chancery jarndyce and jarndyce case we've done it so many time in the pre sessions also right so so how there is a female narrator who's coming in it is an attack on the legal system the case of jarndyce and jarndyce is there and we are also in a position to see that this is predominantly a work where the chancery episode is also coming in right similarly hard times where is the setting of hard times coke town hard times what is the setting of hard times hard times is a work which is set in coke town even people who are studying and preparing for their pgt exams you have to cover charles dickens properly coke town is a setting what is coke town it's a northern industrial city it is a northern industrial city even elizabeth gaskell talks about it manchester she's talking about it so this is an industrial city that we are able to see Uh, john foster has actually spoken the reality of dickens's life altogether otherwise nobody was aware about dickens's life altogether what is it telling you about it's an attack on the utilitarian spirit in the in the characters of bounderby and gradgrind 
and Sissy Chuf is the only hope that we are able to see in this particular work. Thomas Gradgra and Jose are bound bound to be. They are all they are both being attacked, sowing, winnowing, and reaping. Gardening, so sowing, gardening. So how we are able to see that the work is divided into three parts altogether? Right, so that is something. Tale of two cities, London and Paris, set in the backdrop of the French Revolution, taken from inspiration from Carlyle's writings. All those things become important. Uh, the posthumous papers of Pickwick Club. The posthumous papers of Pickwick Club. Why is this important? We are able to see because it has the uh, you know the, the the caricatures of posthumous papers of Pickwick Club was coming from Robert Semor. Robert Semor was the caricaturer. Robert Semor is the caricaturer. Adi Trivedi also has this line, right? Robert Semor. Robert Semor is the caricaturist who is coming in, uh, and the central character is Samuel Pickwick. We've done this question very recently, also. I don't remember whether it was a paid session or a free app session, but we've done the characters. He's a founder of the Pickwick Club, and we are able to see the other friends that he is having. Caricature. Dickens is very important for caricatures altogether. Oliver Twist. What is the subtitle of Oliver Twist? Everyone, very very quickly, Oliver Twist. Who? What is the subtitle of Oliver Twist? The subtitle of Oliver Twist is the Parish Boys' Progress. Remember the Parish Boys' Progress. This is Dickens' second novel that is coming in. At least, if not everything, what you can all do is you can just make sure that you are preparing at least small little notes, right? The least that you can probably do is the least that you can probably do is you can have these small little lecture card notes at least prepared for all the writings that you are studying. For all the writings, you can at least have these lecture cards. If nothing from the Oxford Companion, you can just cover them bit by bit. Small little uh, notes you can make and then keep on adding when you look at the questions. Rags to Riches story, Oliver Twist. Oliver Twist, remember, is also an example of Newgate novel. Newgate novels that are telling you the lives of criminals altogether. That is what the Newgate novels are actually doing. Barnaby Raj, Old Curiosity Shop. Old Curiosity Shop has got the most melancholic scene altogether. And Barnaby Raj and Tale of Two Cities are two historical novels that are coming from the pen of Dickens. His American novels, his travel writings. Everything is critically important, right? David Copperfield, the most autobiographical work. So the best thing is that what you can do is you can just make these small little notes. At least, if not nothing, at least read them from the Oxford Companion to Literature before your exams. That should certainly be there. Right. Okay. Then, of course, uh, you know all these stories on the nineteenth-century Gothic writings. Nineteenth-century Gothic writings. Nineteenth-century female-centric writings. Female-centric writings. Anna Karenina. Right. Madame Bovary. Cleopatra. Madame Bovary. Everything is becoming important. Nineteenth-century is a is a potpourri of sorts. Right. It's a potpourri of sorts. So many characters are coming in. Right. That is what we are able to see. Yes, yes, Shalini, absolutely right. So, uh, all these, uh, you know, uh, aspects become important. We are able to see that Bram Bram Stoker's novella, a uh, novel Dracula, it is actually inspired from this real life character, Vlad M. Paler. This question comes directly in your exams. So. 20th uh, sorry 19th century is very variegated you have newgate novels you have silver folk novels you have condition of england novels silver folk novels are novels that are telling you about the rich aristocratic life of uh, people right it's telling you about rich aristocratic life newgate novels are telling you about the lives of criminals right they are discussing about the lives of criminals that is what they're talking about So all of these, yes, absolutely, absolutely right, Charlie. Thackeray is criticizing Newgate novels and Catherine. How even even when we are looking at Northanger Abbey, that is also an example of a spoof on Gothic literature. So how you are having Gothic literature, detective fiction that is emerging, detective fiction and writings like Moonstone by Wilkie Collins, or for that matter, when we are looking at Edgar Allan Poe. So there is an entire uh, children's fiction. Look at look at the variety. Look at the variety that you are having. Children's fiction, Treasure Island by R. L. Stevenson, or for that matter, detective fiction that is coming in, or uh, your your so-called gothic literature that is coming in nineteenth century. It's all very important for all of us to cover it. Silver folk novels. 
silver folk novels are novels that are trying to help you uh, deal with the aristocratic classes because remember there's a lot of wealth that is coming in there's a lot of wealth that is so this is exactly what we were discussing in the classroom class at 9:15 uh, in the beginning of uh, beginning to uh, american literature preface to american literature we were talking about how india is currently uh, you know when we talk about india's uh, gdp uh, jump has been 13.5% which is higher than any other country where the global gdp is shrinking india's gdp is rising why is that so that is because of the fact that you know there is a class of people who is working harder spending more that is leading to the uh, the, the the so called upkeep of the capitalistic forces all, all, all throughout right so here we are in a position to see here we are in a position to see that in 1927 william hazlitt is coming and coining the term silver folk he's writing this article called the dandy school and these silver folk writings like uh, the writings of edward buller lighton also so uh, what what we are in a position to see is that these silver folk writings are novels now compare this with russian literature alexander pushkin's eugen wanjit or compare it with the writings like the only novel of oscar wilde the prime of uh, sorry the picture of dorian gray where a dandy is being depicted so what are you in a position to see you're in a position to see that this is actually a genre which is become very very popular right which has become very very popular altogether during the victorian age right so here uh, telling uh, see basically there's a craving of the middle classes to know about what is happening in the life of uh, aristocrats that is how your influencers are flourishing because they are telling things to us which we have always wanted to see it it was never this accessible to understand or to see to get a sneak peek into the house of a celebrity as much as it is today the celebrity themselves have opened their fan pages they come live they interact with their fans that's real fans that's really important for their social media uh, presence altogether so these fashionable uh, genres uh, these fashionable novels are becoming very very popular famously called as the silver folk novels right so extremely popular firm which is trying to feed to the curiosity of the middle classes the middle class have wanted to know what is happening in the life there's so many uh, you know there's so much uh, research which has been done over here how it tells us about culture cultural practices our uh, our understanding you know our need to look at the lives of the uh, the aristocrats all together right so silver folk the victorian hazlitt is coining it in the dandy school right and hazlitt particularly was uh, trying to you know hazlitt was deriding the term right he was saying that these are these are novels that that are not really complete or you know they they're, they're just very very hollow altogether so that is another thing that we are able to look at so please remember this that you know bulwer lightens writings or other writings that were coming in clearly they were all a part of your uh, your silver folk tradition that we were able to see uh, a, a bulwer lightens pelham or the adventures of a gentleman you can write this down pelham is a brilliant example pelham is becoming a brilliant brilliant example pelham or the life of a gentleman by uh, bulwer lighten bulwer lighten bulwer lighten is writing this particular work all together so bulwer lightens work pelham or the adventures of a gentleman 1828 became very important it set the formula for silver folk writings all together that is what you are able to see the dandy literature as it was called exclusive literature telling us about the aristocratic classes and tonalities all together that is of course important uh then of course a lot of your french writings a lot of your russian literature stondals so even when you start reading rotledge rotledge talks about how benjamin disraeli as well as stondal are trying to talk about these two cultures which are there <coughs> right they're trying to talk about these two cultures that are coexisting these two areas that are coexisting all together right so what are we in a position to see we are in a position to look at how yes rupesh pw yeah how uh, uh, you know your french writings women writing so even even when we talk when we talk about flaubert when we're talking about stendhal french writings or when we're talking about leo tolstoy or we're talking about uh, how russian literature of the 19th century is emerging right so all of these european writings are very important especially which are coming in the 18th uh, uh, which are coming in the 19th century julian sorel uh, you know inspiring looking up to napoleon and his meteoric rise 
Napoleon was a superstar for everybody. He was a celebrity for everybody. He was a person whom everybody wanted to emulate. Right? How he is such an ambitious protagonist that we are able to see. Strondal's, uh, uh, Strondal's, entire, uh, Strondal's entire creation, the form of uh, Julian Sorel is becoming very, very important over here. Right? So, uh, the uh, works like Red and the Black have to be actually studied in proper detail. Why they have to be studied in proper detail? Because these are core pieces of your French writings of 19th century that are trying to depict the French society. The salon culture, which is there, that is getting that is getting depicted as it is 1830 is a very important date altogether. Right. So here these are writings that are coming in. These are writings that are emerging uh, that we have to be more aware about how red and the black is, uh, you know, uh, Stonda's writings. There's a there's a contextual story also what led to the development of this work. There's a background story also, which is, uh, you know, there. So Julian Sorel is coming in ambitious working class uh, person, very, very ambitious. He wants to advance in the society via church. And what we are able to see over here is that uh, he wants to become better. Uh, he he's completely, completely destroyed by that power, that passion altogether to like you know achieve something. How you having characters like Marcus the Mole? Um, Marcus the Mole uh, is a person who helps Julian Sorel uh, rise. Also, uh, Stondal's real name Maria Henry Bell. This question comes in over here. Right. So uh, Red and the Black is actually trying to tell us about Restoration France, Restoration France altogether. Very important, realistic, psychological novel. It's not just re realistic. <coughs> Sorry. But it's also psychologically uh, triggered. So uh, other European literatures also have to be done altogether. Uh, Fleubart's writings like The Temptation of St. Anthony, The Temptation of St. Anthony, a prose poem that Fleubart is writing, Sentimental Education, the novel that he's writing. So Fleubart, again, very, very important. Right, Flaubert again, uh, an extremely important writer. So, 19th century uh, French literature is also becoming extremely important for all of us. Right, it's 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 extremely becoming very very important for all of us um, uh, to look at how you're in a position to see that you know literature is evolving, realism is entering the threshold altogether. Right. <coughs> Do take a look at Flaubert uh, as a person, Gidi Maupassant, Emal Zola, uh, Baudelaire, all these French writers, Balzac, Victor Hugo, Leo Tolstoy, uh, these 19th century literature and Balzac, Victor Hugo, uh, Flaubert, uh, French literature has to be done. I'm so sorry, I don't know what have I had. <coughs> My throat is all gone. Anyway, so uh, Fleubart is, uh, of course, another important, pertinent writer that we are able to see. And, you know, even when we talk about Madame Bovary, that's a very important story which is telling us about the bourgeois life. Right? So, the bourgeois life is actually something that is getting depicted over here. That is also something which is extremely important for us to cover. Uh, you you definitely have to uh, take a look at Emma Bovary's, uh, Madame Bovary's summary altogether, 1857. A sentimental education is also a work which is coming from the pen uh, of uh, Fleubart itself. So all of these writers are, of course, important, right? Madame Bovary, why is it important? It's important because it's telling us about adultery but still giving us an image of profound uh, humanity altogether. Emma's story is being depicted, a beautiful farm girl, right? So so how uh, the, the characterization, which is keeping women at the center, that also becomes important for us to uh, take a look at, try to make sure that we are digesting all these factors also. Uh, then, of course, you know, all these uh, uh, questions that keep on coming, like Jacob Marley is the name of the ghost. So Dickens, uh, uh, Dickens, Thackeray, Hardy, you will have to Walter Scott, 19th century literature, 19th century novels. You will have to cover one novel uh, or one novelist per day. That is how you can actually compile all your notes all together. Just be very organized as well, because it's a huge uh, canvas that we are talking about. Give a cursory readings all together as well. Um, so that, that also really helps in the long term and the long run also. George Gissing, lesser known writers like Charles Kingsley, George Gissing, <coughs> right? Charles Kingsley, George Gissing, they're all important. They're lesser known writers, but they're all important. 
works like new grub street works like the odd woman mary Ma uh, so so mary burton is by elizabeth gaskell which is like a uh, uh, an important uh, writing telling us about the uh, industrialized uh, industrialized work culture as well but you know gisting charles kingsley benjamin disraeli uh, rl stevenson uh, all of these are minor writers who are coming who are not getting as popular as dickens or wilkie collins uh, in the mainstream and even uh, posterity wise not getting very popular like george eliot or the bronte sisters but they are very important from your examination perspective george meredith you get questions gissing you get questions charles kingsley you get questions elizabeth gaskell you get questions that are coming in so uh, even the lesser known writers of the 19th century their writings their works benjamin disraeli's endymion these are all questions that are constantly being asked as well thackeray of course has to be covered especially if you're uh, if you're writing your pgt exams post graduate teacher exams you have thackeray as a part of your syllabus also uh, there are these questions every now and then that are being asked uh, on on thackeray his writings his works all together right uh, why why is thackeray important again the loose baggy monsters the representation of the bourgeois life uh, how we are able to see the realistic depictions that are coming in and these are all journalists also right so when we talk about yellow flash uh, the the pseudonym that he is using right so what are we in a position to see we are largely in a position to see how these writers are developing a skill uh, to write via being journalists via uh, making sure that you know they they getting captivated by the power of observation and then presenting these works in front of all of us right so all of these all of these are then accordingly together helping us build our understanding of victorian literature even on youtube we have conducted so many lectures on on uh, victorian literature you can also coalesce all those lectures together try to compile all of them together as well and and get like a proper understanding uh, so you know for instance when we talk about vanity fair a novel without a hero telling us about becky sharp and uh, emilia sedel and both of them are foils to each other just like jane eyre's foil who's jane eyre's foil helen burns who's the foil of jane eyre helen burns is the foil of jane eyre similarly we're able to see that becky sharp and amelia they're the foils to each other foils are contrasting personalities which will make the uh, the features of the central protagonist come across even in a brighter way altogether right that is what you're able to see becky is a headstrong woman falling in love with men uh, you know uh, but, but not just that like you know a not endorsing conventional uh, attitudes towards uh, femininity not endorsing them at all right so all of these pointers are of course then becoming extremely exceptionally important for us when we are looking at victorian age writings henry esmond history of henry esmond historical novel telling you about henry esmond new combs has roman lal's character roman lal is modeled on raja ramohan roy right so all of these are questions that are constantly being asked that are constantly being triggered and you need to understand that why are they coming in your exams over here right a uh, condition of england novels used by thomas carlyle for the very first time you get novels silver folk novels everything is important all the categories that are coming in uh benjamin disraeli sibyl uh, elizabeth gaskell's north and south dickens even for that matter elizabeth barrett browning also is helping us understand the condition of the working classes that is what you are able to see benjamin disraeli's endymion is coming in right endymion is a romance but because uh, benjamin disraeli is a politician and also the prime minister for a brief tenure we are able to see that the political lessons is something that he is helping us with he is helping us with political lessons right so always remember hardy is a must read writer you definitely get a question from hardy right most of the times uh, you are getting a question from either his novels or from his poetry you are in a position to get these uh, get these questions every now and then michael henshaw the central protagonist was coming in right michael henshaw coming in in the mayor of casterbridge gets drunk at the fair sells his daughter for 5 guineas right and that's how the entire process starts beautiful lines that are coming still comes in your uh, set exams happiness was but an occasional episode in the general drama of pain 
right so all of these all of these works are then contributing towards understanding your 19th century literature leo tolstoy's war and peace central character that you are having you are having peri uh, uh, besukov's character is there which is a central character war and peace anna karenina besukov's character Be besukov's character is important why because he's a man who's educated abroad but very socially awkward and he is very similar to leo tolstoy he is very very similar to leo tolstoy right so so tolstoy fleubart tolstoy russian literature fleubart when we are looking at french writing so so here understand this that 19th century literature is also your european writings your american writings also that are coming in american literature edgar allan poe hawthorne herman melville uh, even for that matter walt whitman they're all writing during this particular period again a best selling writer Wilkie Collins coming in, right, helping us write this all year round. We are, so Wilkie Collins and Dickens were the two very successful writers during their times. During their times, they were very very successful. They were writing at times when they themselves were absolutely very very successful. Let us uh, pause a little, and I have a few questions for all of you before we wrap up. Uh, I have a few questions for all of you, so I hope you are all ready. Just stretch yourself a little. Uh, if you are uh, probably feeling sleepy, uh, just stretch yourself because here comes the question. First question, and tell me in the comment section how many of you are getting right. Who wrote a postmodern reworking of Charles Dickens' Great Expectations without changing? The title. Everyone, let's see how many of you are awake. Yes, let's see how many of you are able to get this right. So far, nobody has answered it. Are we all sleeping? Very good. Das Priyanka was the first one to answer it. Very good, Das Priyanka. Absolutely right. This is the correct answer. Kathy Aker is writing. Then everybody is given the right answer. Very, very good. Which of the following fictional characters is believed to be based on the 15th century real life character Vlad the Impaler? Vlad, Vlad, uh, Vlad the Impaler. Which work by Bram Stoker, which is coming in? Bram Stoker. You should also tell me the dates. You should also tell me other details which are there. Yes. What is the correct answer? Who's the first person to tell me this? Who's going to be the first person to help me understand this? No, 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 no. Yes. Now, what is the correct answer? Okay, that's Priyanka again. Shikha has also answered it. Gaurav, very good. Zahida, absolutely right. Bram Stoker's Count Dracula. Count Dracula, very good, very good. Which of the following terms describe the novel of fashionable life, high life in 19th century? Few questions only we'll do today. Uh, then don't worry about it. Yes, what is the correct answer here, everyone? Yes, yes, yes. What is the correct answer here? Yes, this is the next question now. What is the correct answer here? Very good. Shikha is the first one to answer it. Shikha is the first one. Silver Folk is the right answer. Silver Folk is the right answer. And who's coining the term? Who's coining the term? Silver Folk. Silver Folk is the term coined by. Who's coining the term? Let's see who's the first one. Who's not sleeping? And which, which work? Which work is he coining the term? Who's coining it? Which work is he coining it in? Nobody is answering. <laughs> oh God. Okay, I've got it. But now tell me the other two questions that I'm asking. Who's coining this term? And William has it. Shikha is the first one to answer that. In which work? In the dandy school. Very good. Shikha was the first one. Very good. Very good. Who's the creator of the character Julian Sorel? Julian Sorel is a character who's created by? Who's creating it? Julian Sorel's character. Julian Sorrell's character is created by, yes, everyone, who's creating the character of Julian Sorrell? Okay, that's done, that's done. Now, come on to the next question. Move on now. So, sorry. <clears throat> it is Tondal. It is Tondal. A few of you got it right. Which two of the following are works by Fleubart? Fleubart's writings. We just talked about it also. Which are the writings of Fleubart?
yes everyone what what are the few few about in writings so even if you use the elimination method you can actually eliminate these right you can actually eliminate these right so automatically which are the the ones you have to tell me two of them right a and d yes very good das priyanka the temptation of saint anthony and sentimental education who among the following appears as a ghost in dickens writings appears as a ghost in dickens writings who is appearing as a ghost who is appearing as a ghost yes who is a ghost guess everyone who is a ghost who is appearing as a ghost So sorry. <clears throat> sorry. Yes, Jacob Marley is the right answer. Jacob Marley is the right answer. Absolutely right. Ah, uh, which are the works of George Gissing? George Gissing's writings. Which are the works of George Gissing? George Gissing, Charles Kingsley, Benjamin Disraeli, Elizabeth Gaskill. All of these. George Meredith, The Egoist. Very important. What is it? What is it? Has been dead for seven years. Very good, Shalini. What is the correct answer? Thank you, Manisha. I will. I will. What is the correct answer here, everyone? Yes, yes, yes. So the new Grub Street and Odd Woman. New Grub Street and Odd Woman. This is by Elizabeth Gaskell and this is by Anne Bronte. Stormy Sisterhood, right? Or uh, who's the foil to Amelia's character in uh, in Thackeray's Vanity Fair or a novel without a hero? Who's the foil? Who's the foil that we are able to see? Who's the foil that is coming across? <coughs> Sorry. Who's the foil in Amelia's Vanity Fair? Oh, uh, sorry, yeah, Amelia's character in Vanity Fair. Yes, everyone. What is the correct answer here? Yes, Becky Sharp. Absolutely right, Becky Sharp. Right, Becky Sharp. Like I said, even if you are not able to cover the summaries, at least go over the Oxford Companion notes. Right, ah, uh, which is not an example of condition of England novel. Term coined by Thomas Carlyle, telling you about the working class ah uh, condition. Chartism is also a working class movement, very active in the eighteen forties. Right, very very active during the eighteen forties. Yes, everyone. So Sybil, North and South, Dume and Son, they are all examples of condition of England novels because they're telling you about the plight of the working classes. Dume and Son telling, of course, about the Son fetish. But Vanity Fair is more a bourgeois novel. Vanity Fair is more a bourgeois novel. Ah, uh, the history of Henry Esmond is a work written by. It is a work written by the creator of. Vanity Fair, Vanity Fair. Where is the title taken from? Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress. Do remember this as well. It is taken from Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, right? So please quickly tell us what is the correct answer here. What is the correct answer here? Thackeray. Thackeray is the correct answer, right? Thackeray is the one. Nobody has given Thackeray as the right answer. There's no D over here. <laughs> Why are all of you uh, saying D? Who is the central character and the mouthpiece of Tolstoy in War and Peace? Mouthpiece, alter ego, alter ego. We just did that, right? Bezukov. I hope you all remember Bezukov. Bezukov is the person who is the mouthpiece of Tolstoy. He is he is literally acting like a sort of a mouthpiece for Leo Tolstoy. Bezukov is the right answer here. I hope everybody is able to uh, get that right, right? Bezukov is coming in and Bezukov is uh, helping us with that. Please remember this, because a lot of times, you know, these are the are the kinds of questions that uh, we usually go wrong with. Uh, yes, please, please remember that. Okay, we'll pause over here. Uh, we'll pause over here, and we'll of course continue. Like I said, today's lecture, the primary focus was to make sure that all of you are oriented towards studying nineteenth century literature. I hope you are clear now. Nineteenth century literature is not just British writings, but other writers also that we have to cover. Do take a tour at least of the concepts that we've looked at. Read entire Rotledge cover to cover from uh, for uh, Victorian age, and this is your home. 
homework also i want you to read victorian age from rotlich and be prepared for a quick test on thursday okay there's one announcement probably we may not have a class on thursday it may be rescheduled to friday at 10:30 or uh, so, so just check your schedule i'll share it on the telegram platform also either it will be on thursday itself if in case it's not on thursday then you will have the class positively on friday all right then you will have the class positively on friday so just check the schedule once uh because rather than you know taking uh giving the recording i think live is always better at least there's some sort of an interaction that takes place uh because then recordings just like um, are not really very very helpful okay so i hope you're clear with your homework please do this homework for sure i will be taking a quick 25 question one word a uh, test on victorian age on thursday or friday whenever we are meeting next fine thanks everyone for joining uh and let's just catch up very very soon thank you so much everyone thank you good night kuhu tulika shikha asma madhusmita uh, thank you bachre das kriti rupesh nikumoni gitu gaurav divyani neha priya thank you so much thanks anamika anamika juhi just going up also kosu manisha pratik or right, thanks everyone thanks thanks good night good night sweet dreams sleep well all right sleep well good night everyone sweet dreams uh where is the stop button searching for the stop button in the meantime all of you if you want to part ways then more than welcome and uh take good care of yourself sleep well eat healthy yeah divyani to wednesday app class will take place okay to wednesday app class will take place that will definitely happen uh and rather i would recommend you to go over certain parts also of poetry for that Uh, I'll I'll share the details on the Telegram platform also. But thanks so much for asking that question. Take care, everyone. Good night, sweet dreams. Bye bye. Good night.